So this video is your first introduction into how to express a vector in component form. I'm going to show you one method of taking a vector and expressing it in component form using dot products. So first let's talk about what it even means to put a vector into component form. The component form is really, it's just a way of showing the vector as in an expression where it is equal to the sum of its vector components. And these vector components um, are the projections of the vector along the directions of the coordinate system that you're working in. So we're going to always be working in a Cartesian coordinate system. And so a vector can be represented as the sum of its vector components along the x hat, y hat, and z hat directions. So the purpose of expressing a vector in component form is so that you can then um, use the vector and perform mathematical operations on it instead of always doing the graphical method of drawing the vector like an arrow. So this is a complementary way of thinking about vectors in component form in a particular coordinate system. So let's say we have a vector a right here. It's drawn as an arrow. You can express this vector as the sum of its vector components. So this component right here that's a vector component in the x hat direction. So it's the projection of vector a in the x hat direction. To find a projection, you take a dot product of that vector. So vector a dotted with x hat would give us this expression here because we have the norm of vector a, the norm of x hat, which is the number one, times the cosine of the smallest angle between the two vectors when they are drawn tail to tail. So that's where this um, expression is coming from. You can see that the angle between vector a and x hat when they're placed tail to tail is 90 degrees plus theta. That's where that vector expression is coming from. And then notice that there's also an x hat on there because it's a vector expression. We take a scalar component times that um, x hat unit vector and now I have a vector component. Same thing is true in the y hat direction. We have a dotted with y hat times y hat. We're adding those terms together. This is how vector a is expressed in this particular Cartesian coordinate system. This is an expression in component form. So the method that I'm going to show you in this video is called the dot product method. And it's basically using dot products like I just showed you to take a vector and express it in component form in the Cartesian coordinate system. There are multiple ways to express a vector in component form. This is just one of them. So here are some questions that you should ask yourself when you're trying to determine what method you want to use to put a vector into component form. So the first question, um, in order to do a dot product, you need to know the angles that the vector makes with the Cartesian unit vectors when they're placed tail to tail, and you need to know the norm of the vector. If you know those two things, then you can definitely do dot products, if you know how to do dot products. So these three things must be true for you to choose the dot product method. If you've said yes to all of these things, now we can proceed into the procedure of how to put a vector in component form. So the first thing you're going to do, identify the vector that you need to put into component form. That means you need to know what it looks like and its norm. Once you have that, now you need to choose a coordinate system or use the chosen coordinate system in a particular problem. So you, when I say coordinate system, I'm talking about the x hat, y hat, and z hat unit vectors that define a Cartesian coordinate system. In other classes, you might be using other coordinate systems, and so you might have different unit vectors. We're going to always be talking about the Cartesian coordinate system unit vectors. So draw your vector tail to tail with all three of those Cartesian unit vectors. The next step is to identify the angles that the vector makes with those unit vectors. And so we call these angles alpha, beta, and gamma. Just to kind of, so I were, when I say alpha, I'm talking about the angle that x that the vector makes with x hat. But you just need to identify those angles. Once you do that, now you can actually perform some dot products according to this equation right here. This equation is called the generic expression for putting a vector into component form using the dot product method. So notice that the vector is expressed as the sum of its vector components along the Cartesian unit vectors. So the next step here, we have that generic expression for the vector. We just need to identify and be able to perform these dot products. So 
yeah, the things in parentheses there that I have highlighted in pink, those are the scalar components of the vector in the x-hat direction, the y-hat direction, and the z-hat direction. These are the projections of vector A along the x-hat direction, the y-hat direction, or the z-hat direction. When you take those scalar components and then you multiply them by the unit vector of that particular direction you're talking about, now you have vector components. And so this is why I keep saying that vector A is shown as the sum of its vector components along the Cartesian unit vector directions. So a vector component is made up out of a scalar component times a unit vector. Once you have identified all of the scalar components, you can create your vector components. Then you're going to add them all together, and that's how you have vector A expressed in component form. So this is what we call the first generic expression. This can be applied to any vector at all. It's just shown as the vector is the sum of its vector components. If you actually perform these dot products, you kind of plug in the definition of what it means to do a dot product. So those things in parentheses, a dot x hat, that's the scalar component of a in the x hat direction. When I'm doing a, a dot product there, I need the norm of the first vector, the norm of the second vector, and the cosine of the angle between them. So that angle alpha, that's the angle between vector a and x hat when they're placed tail to tail. The angle beta, that's the angle between vector a and y hat unit vector when they're placed tail to tail. And angle gamma, that's the angle between z hat and vector a when they're placed tail to tail. So um, like I just said, those are all those, that's what those angles mean. And so if you reduce that, you guys know that the norm of any unit vector is the number one. So all of the norm of x hat, norm of y hat, and norms of z hat that you see in this mid expression here, all of those just become the number one. So if you just reduce that, then you'll have this. This is what sometimes what I call the, the second generic expression for a vector in component form. I've just plugged in, I've kind of used the definition of the dot product to simplify the first generic expression and make it a little bit more specific to this vector. Now you just need to plug in the norm of the vector and the angles alpha, beta, and gamma that you identified um, in your previous step. And this is the expression that you'll probably use more often, just kind of jumping down into this one um, right away as you're putting your vectors into component form. So let's do an example together. I have this vector here, it's vector r. This vector, um, let's see, vector r, it's pointing left, up, and out of the board. So this vector has a scalar component um, in, both, in all the x, y, and z hat directions. They tell us here that position vector r has a norm of 12 meters. In a chosen cord, Cartesian coordinate system, r makes an angle of 75 degrees with x hat, 135 degrees with y hat, and 35 degrees with z hat and we want to express R in component form in this chosen coordinate system. So let's follow all the steps of how to put our vector into component form. Step number one was identify the norm of the vector and the angles that it's gonna make, or just kind of visualize. So you have this picture here of vector R and we've identified its norm. The next step was to have a chosen coordinate system. So this one has already been done for us, we just have to obey this coordinate system right here. Um, the third step was to draw this, the unit vectors of this coordinate system tail to tail with vector r. So that's actually already been done for us in this diagram, and they've already kind of labeled alpha, beta, and gamma. It's a three-dimensional vector, so it's kind of hard to, to understand there, so that's why I also just gave you the angles and words. It can be sometimes kind of hard to, to visualize it when it's in three dimensions. So we already have, they've given us the angles that this vector makes with each of the um, Cartesian unit vector directions. So now we just need to kind of plug this information into this. This is our first generic expression for a vector into component form. So I am going to um, go to the next line down. I'm going to actually like plug in the definition of dot product. So instead of writing r dot x hat, I'm going to write the norm of r times the norm of x hat, times the cosine of the smallest angle between them, which they tell us is 75 degrees. And all of that is times x hat. So don't forget that there's another additional x hat that needs to um, be multiplied by the scalar component so that you have a vector component. Now I'll do the y hat direction. Um, r dot y hat would be the norm of r 
times the norm of y hat times the cosine of the smallest angle between them, and that's 135 degrees times y hat. And now in the z hat direction, I have the norm of r times the norm of z hat times the cosine of the angle between them, which is 35 degrees. And all of that is times z hat. So, okay, now I just need to plug in what I know about these norms. And if you already did that in the previous step, that's okay too. I like to kind of write it out in two steps so I can see how I'm applying those dot products. So the norm of R was 12 meters. The norm of X hat is the number one. And then I have cosine of 75 degrees, X hat. So I'm just simplifying these norms of all those unit vectors are the number one and I'm plugging in the norm of R. Now I have 12 meters times the cosine of 135 degrees times y hat, and then 12 meters cosine of 35 degrees z hat. Now it's just up to you and your calculator to kind of plug all this information in. So 12 times cosine of 75, I get 3.11 meters x hat, plus 12 cosine of 135 is negative 8.5 meters y hat. And the last one, 12 meters times the cosine of 35 is 9.8 meters z hat. So this is my final answer for vector r in component form. Double check your final answer. Make sure that you have not committed any intolerable errors accidentally. Um, notice that this says vector r. So the left hand side of our equation is a vector. This is a vector, vector r. That means that everything on the right-hand side of our equation must also be vectors. So this term right here, this is a vector. This is 3.11 meters, that's a scalar, times x hat. That gives us a vector. It's a, it's a vector that is in the positive x hat direction. It has a length of 3.11 meters. This term right here, that is also a vector. It has a length of 8.5 meters, and it points in the negative y hat direction. And this last term, that's also a vector, has a length of 9.8 meters, and it points in the positive z hat direction. So all of our terms are vectors. We haven't committed any intolerable errors. We didn't lose any of our units. We have a final vector expression for um, vector r in component form. And so that's the steps you want to follow every time you're putting a vector into component form and you've chosen to use the dot product method. And again, use this method if you know the norm of the vector, you know the angle that the vector makes with all of the Cartesian unit vectors, and you feel confident about doing dot products.